All right, folks, I'm working on this 2016 or 15, I think, uh, Dodge Ram. It's got the big old Hemi in it, um, and it's got a misfire. They replaced plugs in it, and then it's starting to misfire again, and it's worse. Uh, it's getting worse, is what she's saying. And so I noticed, uh, so yesterday I came out, I checked for control. I, I broke the plug. Uh, to get it off. It, I worked with it for 45 minutes. It's just so delicate plastic. The red part broke, slid down in there. You're working with the mirror reverse. I finally just had to break it. So I'll have to get a new plug and solder that on, or I'll just put a zip tie around it if they want. Um, but, um, it just was misfire and I checked no control. Well, this vehicle disables, like most modern Chryslers, they disable the spark as well as a fuel injector if they detect a misfire for an extended period. Uh, so I cleared all the codes. I plugged it all back in and um, I went ahead and sprayed some deoxid on the computer connectors because I've seen that before on Chrysler's, um, not getting control. And um, I went ahead and started it back up and it was running great. Um, at first, it wasn't doing any of the tappy, ticky, the lifter problems that these have. Um, but it started to tap just a little tiny bit. And it was coming from that bank. You know, I, I took my screwdriver and listened. But it's a very minor. It's not like a major... It's not like it's wiped out a camshaft yet. But it probably does need a set of lifters. It's got 150000 on it. Um, unfortunately, replacing the lifters is an expensive job on these because you have to remove the heads. Um, why they design roller tape at lifters that fail and make it so you have to remove a head to replace it, I don't know. It must have just been cheaper for them. And so I'm thinking, like, maybe that lifter's eating into the cam and it's not opening the intake valve all the way because it seems to misfire less at idle and misfire more when you give it some gas. Um... But I'm like, I don't know. And then eventually the computer says cylinder five uh, misfire pending, then active shuts it down, right? But I'm getting control when it fires it when I reset the computer. And um, so I'm like, well, I could play Swaptronics with the coils, which I might still, but then I got to get another connector off and I'll probably break that connector as well because whoever put spark plugs in it, because they did put new spark plugs in it, they put some Bosch uh, Platinum, some Bosch Double Platinums, which aren't really the right plug for a Dodge, but they are what they are, right? Um, I, I'd use whatever the factory called for. It's probably a champion on this, but I don't know. I haven't looked it up. But I've used Bosch's on stuff before as a cheap plug, and they worked out pretty good for me. Um, but I'm looking, and um, on the plug, I pulled the plugs out of that cylinder five, and we see this little tiny burn mark right here. And this is a pretty new plug, right? And so it's got a little arky burn mark. And what is that? That is a spark that's either coming out of the plug and shortened, but new, normally you'll see a little more of a hole there than that. Let me see if I can get it to focus. <laughs> um, and so, um, but that little trace is coming from the boot most likely and it's leaking down. And so if one plug starts to have a gap outside, it'll kill both plugs because they all fire off the same coil, right? Um, so I'm like, hmm, what's what's going on? Well, we look here at this boot at the end of it. And this boot looks really good, right? We look at the end of this boot. I don't know if you can see it on camera or not. Let me see. But this boot has some tears in it. And that spark is leaking where one of those tears are. And this plug came from the front, or no, it came from the back on the car. It was under this boot. It was the last plug I took out, which was the back one, which had the burn trace. So it came from this boot that has the tears. So my question is, can we replace this, this boot? 
I think we probably can. I'm gonna look on AutoZone and see if we can find a boot. And we'll get that replaced and see if this misfire problem goes away. That might be all it is, hopefully. Hopefully, I mean, I'll have to get the oscilloscope and a pressure transducer out and look at the waveform, see if there's a problem with when the intake or exhaust valve are opening or not opening enough, not opening as much. I have to get into that if I have to, but I know this boot's bad, so I think I'm gonna go get another boot. We're gonna try it, and it's probably just where they replaced the plugs. They did not do the boots. And it was probably just stuck on the old plug really good. And they pried it up out of there. And it's just tore it and cracked it a little bit. But like I said, the other one doesn't have any cracks in it. It looks completely good. So it's just this one. And I can see evidence that the spark's been jumping. Which will kill both plugs and cause a misfire. And it might happen more when it gets hot. It, you know, it just depends. But that spark leaking is not good. So let me see if I can find a boot. We'll get this replaced. But here's the truck. Here's the, the truck. It's a really nice truck. It's a clean truck. It's It's been kept clean inside and out and underneath and all around. It's got a clean motor. I can tell the mechanic that she normally has work on it. Really does good work. He really takes care of it. The air filters are changed. The battery's been changed. She wrote the date on the battery. He really does good work. I think we just ran into a bad spark plug boot and you know i don't blame him he was trying to save her some money and not replace coil packs or boots right and and get her some okay spark plugs to use right and this this happens sometimes i'm just hoping this is it and i found it and it gets this truck back on the road and running right for her so it looks like a Riley's curious ignition coil boot it's six dollars so i'm gonna run up there and get one and we're gonna try this out okay so i tried swapping the coil pack uh from number five over to here i tried replacing the boot that did not solve the misfire i it went back misfire pending and then I went and swapped the coil pack with this one over here. I got that connector off and back on just fine. And um, misfire stayed with cylinder five. So I could get my scope out and try to look at that waveform and determine if it's a lean code, but I just want to see if the injector is good and firing, right? So what I've done is I back probed into the injector and my fuel, uh, my fuel gauge my fuel pressure gauge doesn't have an adapter that will fit this so um what we're doing is we're using the uh, variable speed fuel pump actual rail pressure pid right now we're at 10 pounds so if we cycle the key that should go up 50 or 60 pounds let me see i'm just gonna say before you do that injector pulse test one additional thing if you're doing it with the connector still plugged into the ECM, right? You want to make sure that you probe this and you know which wire is the positive one and which wire is the negative one. And you want to go to the negative on the tester for the negative wire and the positive on the tester for the positive wire. Or else you can back feed 12 volts into the control on the computer, which is a ground control, and you could possibly blow it. So you wanna make sure you have those polarities right. In fact, you if you have the ignition on, you really don't even have to probe in the 12 volts from the tester. You just have to probe in the negative. And that way you know you won't blow anything. Except for your tester, if you back probe the positive and you're on the negative side, maybe. I don't know. But just make sure you have the polarity on those right. Okay, so that should have engaged the fuel pump there. Yeah, we're at 61 pounds now. So now I wanna go here. I just wanna do a short pulse, which is number one. So this hooks to the battery. You hook it across the injector and it will fire the injector. 
And so now we'll just watch our fuel pressure and we'll do a pulse. Maybe. <laughs> Let me make sure I'm tight in here. Hmm. I'm at 61. Let me try just resetting this injector. Sometimes white fuel injector tester needs a reset. We'll put it on one and we'll hit pause again. There we go, it pulsed it, it went down to 45, we'll pulse it again. 31, pulse it again. 28. So I know that fuel injector is firing. So I know it's not a fuel related issue. Um, that pretty much leads me to, it's a cam shot. All right folks, so I got this one diagnosed. I did not tear off the valve cover. I went and got my oscilloscope out. I put it down there. I, I put my pressure transducer in it. I hooked it up. I got my pressure transducer running up here. Took to my Pico scope. This is a pressure transducer setup that I made myself. I'll put a link to the video. Uh, but we can see here, there's our compression stroke. Nice, right? It comes here. This is our expansion pocket, all right? Here's the exhaust valve, right? Up being open and letting the exhaust out and then right in here or this little bumpy right here is where the intake valve is opening but it's not coming down it's not coming very far open at all if we look at a typical waveform i'll just show you this should come right here and be an intake pocket and it should drop down so you have your expansion pocket your exhaust valve exhaust valve closes intake valve opens this should drop down it's not dropping down so we have the lifter tick, the compression, and it's wiped out the cam lobe and it's no longer opening that intake valve. It's unfortunate, but that much damage on this old engine probably means she needs another engine uh, because I'm getting oil pressure uh, codes for low oil pressure out of the computer as well, which means that that metal off of the camshaft has started to eat into the main bearings. It's unfortunate. It's a nice truck. Um, I don't do heavy line work. I don't do engine swaps. Especially not on this because it's all plastic. It's going to break, but it needs a new engine. So, yep, that, that proves it. <laughs> we see right there where the intake valve just bumps open a little bit, but it's not holding open because that camshaft looks bad. And that's what's causing our misfire. That's why it's slowly gotten worse as that cam lobes continue to wear down. So, it is what it is. Can't fix them all. <laughs> all right. All right. That's diagnosed. Um, it's unfortunate. Um, I let the owner know, you know, you could do lifters and tear the heads off. You're probably going to have to do the camshaft too because the camshaft is obviously from the waveform. It's ground down. It's bad. And you could replace the camshaft. But it's probably wiped out the cam bearings and probably wiped out the main bearings, which is why it's getting oil pressure sensor codes. Um, you know, the oil pressure is lower than expected is the, the code that I got. Um, it is what it is, you know. Um, these roller tapets are bad. There's Fords with this problem. There's Chrysler's with this problem. I don't know of any GMs, but maybe GMs have the problem too. But roller tapet cams, I just, I don't like them. I, I, I'd rather go back to a good old fashioned solid lift cam, right? But it is what it is. Um, and so, you know, I don't do a heavy line work or replace engines, so that'll have to go to a different shop if he chooses to find a used engine and put it in the truck. It's a really nice truck. It's definitely worth it. It's definitely worth it. But it's probably going to be at least a few thousand dollars to get a used engine and drop it in there. Oh, well. I'm on to the next one. I've got a Equinox coming that they want me to look over. And I've got a 
horn to diagnose on that uh, Chrysler or Dodge Avenger that I looked at last weekend. It's been running great, but the horn doesn't work. So we'll see. I'll talk to y'all later. This is Tom, your frugal prepper.